Hey there, this is Ben Porchuk talking to you from not your everyday place, but I'm in the middle of this amazing shrub called the red elderberry. Uh, no, you can't eat the berries, they're poisonous, but birds love them. And all sorts of urban wildlife from tiny little wasps to hoverflies will nectar on the flowers. But it's also super important for one of the most beautiful and incredible of the moths that we can find in our urban areas, the giant silkworm moth. And this one is a cercropia, and this is actually a, a cocoon or a chrysalis. The species will survive in this stage for six to eight months, and being a silkworm moth, this cocoon is made of silk and it's really fibrous and strong. It is also super insulating, which means they can survive in here in eastern North America and some of our stretches in winter where it goes down to 40 below. So they don't super freeze. They're really incredible moths. They have an amazing life cycle and I'm going to share with you today a little bit about that because this is the time of year that these chrysalises will open up and the, the moth comes out, pumps the fluid into its wings and begins its life stage as the adult. And they're only an adult though for about a week or so. So I released a couple last night that metamorphosed and what's super exciting, let me switch the camera here is that the female that I released right onto this host plant, this red elderberry, she was sitting there waiting to fly away tonight and a male came in and they are currently breeding. They will apparently breed for most of the day and then the male will fly away and die. And then the female will hang out for, oh, anywhere from 12 hours to a day and a half before she lays her eggs. She will lay about a hundred eggs on a host plant like this. A lot of moths and butterflies will only have one or two host plants. The Cercropia moth, the giant Cercropia, actually has six or seven and the red mulberry, sorry, the red elderberry is one of them. So she'll probably lay her eggs on this plant here, maybe even on these leaves by my nose. Of those eggs, the hundred eggs or so, only one or two will survive. They'll get eaten by wasps, birds, all sorts of things as they turn into caterpillars and go through the various instar stages until they get to about the size of an index finger and then they'll go back into the chrysalis and the cycle will continue. So another incredible reason to use native plants. Native plants support our local wildlife populations by bringing in the insects which bring in larger insects, brings in birds and mammals. So critical to help us rebuild our urban ecology by putting in native plants so that we can enjoy them because they have beauty in themselves, but also for things like giant silkworm moths. And I'll turn the camera around one more time. The moth on the right is a wild male, now affectionately known as Big Sexy. As I release the three females, Big Sexy returned on consecutive nights, breeding with each female for a total of 76 hours, or a whopping 45% of his entire adult life, mating. I could tell it was Big Sexy. You see how the tips of his wings are starting to fray? Yep, each night, I looked at those wingtips and they are exactly the same. He may be one of the greatest moth lovers of all time. 